Treachery. Fire. Blood. The Fall of Gondolin. The Lord of the Rings and associated stories are filled with battles and wars, ranging from small skirmishes between a dozen combatants to great sieges that changed the course of history. One of the more dramatic battles that occurred during the earlier days of history was the Fall of Gondolin. As the name might imply, the battle was a crushing blow for the elves residing in Middle-earth at the time, as Morgoth sent a great host of forces to take the city. In this video, we'll go over the founding of the city in the early First Era, and its short history before it was suddenly sacked. The story of Gondolin begins with an elf named Turgon, son of Fingolfin. Fingolfin was the half-brother of the legendary craftsman Feanor, and after the death of their father at the hands of Morgoth in the land of Amon, Feanor rallied his people to rage across the ocean towards Middle-earth in order to take revenge on Morgoth. Turgon was at first against the exodus of his people from Amon, but eventually followed his father across the northern icy wastes in order to reach Middle-earth. He would lose his wife on the journey. A short time after arriving in Middle-earth, Turgon received a dream sent by the Vala, Ulmo, telling him to look for a hidden place in which his people could hide from the wrath of Morgoth. Later that year, Ulmo appeared directly to Turgon and guided him to a valley hidden within a mountain range. Turgon initially ignored the discovery for many years, but as more battles waged between the elves and Morgoth's forces, Turgon eventually decided to have a city built in the valley. When the city was finally completed in secret, Ulmo assisted in hiding Turgon's people as they moved into the new city, named Gondolin, meaning Hidden Rock. When it was finished, it was said to rival one of the great elven cities in Valinor. For three centuries, the elves in Gondolin had peace, as Morgoth was besieged in his fortress and few knew the location of the hidden city. Unfortunately, Morgoth eventually broke the siege against his fortress, and 14 years later, Turgon decided to break his isolationism and ride to war with 10,000 elves. He would go on to take part in the battle known as the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, a disastrous defeat for the alliance against Morgoth. Thousands and thousands were slain, and Turgon barely survived, only due to a noble sacrifice of the men involved. Morgoth reaped the rewards of victory, but he still did not know the location of Turgon's hidden city, and would pour much of his strength and resources into finding it. Unfortunately, it would be Turgon's compassion and generosity that would in part lead to the downfall of his city. During the time of peace in Gondolin, Turgon's sister journeyed across Middle-earth, but her guards returned without her and reported her lost. Twenty years later, she returned with a son known as Maeglin, whose father was apparently an individual known as the Dark Elf because of his association with the dwarves. As a side note, this elf is notable for crafting the sword that would eventually become Gurthang, wielded by Turin Tarambar. Turgon accepted Maeglin into his city, and Maeglin bowed to him as his lord, but the Dark Elf followed the two to Gondolin. He refused to accept Turgon as his lord, and instead planned to kill himself and his son. He threw a poison dart at his son, but missed, killing Turgon's sister instead. For his crime, he was thrown from atop Gondolin. Maeglin would go on to become a wise counselor of Turgon. Sometime after these events, two brothers of men, Hurin and Huor, were separated from their army and became lost in the mountains around Gondolin. They were brought to the city, where they remained for nearly a year due to the kindness of Turgon. After the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, Hurin was captured by Morgoth and was tortured for the location of Gondolin, but Hurin did not break. Finally, Morgoth cursed him and his family, most notably his son Turin, and forced him to watch for 28 years. After the death of his children, Morgoth released Hurin, and he eventually traveled to the mountain range near Gondolin, hoping that he would be brought to the city again. Hurin cried out to Turgon, but received no response and thus turned away. Morgoth's spies that were watching, however, now knew Gondolin was in this vicinity. 
Tuorgon's daughter married Huor's son, Tuor, a rare relationship between an elf and a man, but Maeglin grew jealous, for he also loved Tuorgon's daughter. While straying too far from the city on one occasion, Maeglin was captured by orcs who took him to Morgoth. Maeglin willingly told him the location of Gondolin, under the conditions that Tuor be killed, he be given Tuorgon's daughter in marriage, and he became Lord of Gondolin. Maeglin returned to Gondolin and kept his meeting a secret. Thus begins the Siege of Gondolin. Several advisors urged Tuorgon to flee once they learned of the coming assault, but Maeglin whispered in his ear, and he was convinced of the invincibility of his city. On the evening of a festival, the residents of Gondolin gathered to observe the sunset, when suddenly forces poured over the mountain ridges and beset the city from all sides. The Lord of Balrogs, Gothmog, led Morgoth's forces, which consisted of Balrogs, dragons, wolves, thousands of orcs, and great iron machines that would not be seen again for the remainder of recorded events. These machines besieged the walls of Gondolin, allowing the rest of the forces to enter. Turgon's people fought valiantly, but were clearly outmatched. During the battle, Maeglin and the troops loyal to him sought out Tuor in order to kill him and his young son, Yarendil. A fight broke out between Maeglin and Tuor and their soldiers, which ended with Tuor throwing Maeglin off the wall to his death, much like his father. Tuor joined up with an elf lord named Ecthelion, and the two charged the attacking forces head on. The two slew many combatants, including Tuor slashing a dragon's foot, causing it to flee, although Ecthelion was wounded by a Balrog's whip. The forces of Gondolin eventually were pushed back into the central square of the city, as Gothmog led an attack with orcs and a dragon. Tuor was nearly killed here, but a wounded Ecthelion stood against Gothmog, allowing the others a chance to escape. Gothmog ruined Ecthelion's right arm, but the elf counterattacked by impaling Gothmog with the spike of his helmet, and the two fell into the Fountain of the King, where they both died. Many more elves died in the square, but the remainder fled into the Tower of the King, where Turgon cried out and declared Tuor to be the leader of Gondolin. Turgon refused to leave the city, and was slain by orcs, as Tuor led his people through a secret escape tunnel out of the city. Unfortunately, Morgoth was aware of their escape, and dispatched forces to find them. A Balrog caught up with the fleeing elves, but another elven lord, Glorfindel, was among them, and dueled the Balrog. Much like Ecthelion, Glorfindel managed to slay the Balrog, but died in the process. The remaining elves of Gondolin managed to flee from Morgoth, and Tuor's son, Yarendil, would go on to be instrumental in Morgoth's downfall. War is never a pretty thing, and the fall of Gondolin was surrounded with treachery, jealousy, blood, tears, and an example of unfortunate compassion. The exact canonicity of the fall of Gondolin is debatable, as it was one of the earliest things that Tolkien wrote for the Legendarium, and was never fully completed by him. Notably, however, he wrote the fall of Gondolin while recovering after a battle during World War I, providing a lot of the unique flavor and nature of the writing for the siege. Regardless of the exact canonicity of the events, the fall of Gondolin is certainly among the more evocative and lamentable battles in the Legendarium.